Donald Trump has radically reshaped the Republican Party. He has jettisoned many of the party's long-held beliefs, and his unorthodox, plain-speaking leadership style has curried favor with a fiercely loyal supporter base. Join the swamp, baby! He may have lost the election, but Trump still managed to win the second largest vote in American presidential history. What's next for the Republican Party? You submitted your questions to Idris Kaloun, US policy correspondent, and James Astle, Washington bureau chief. How much support for Trump is actually left in the party? Trump is still by far the most popular Republican, the most popular person in his party. We have fresh polling on this. Something like half, bit more than half Republicans say right now that Trump should be the party's candidate for the next general election in 2024. And above and beyond that, he has a sort of grip on his party because the most uh, enthusiastic Republicans tend to be the most devoted Trump followers, and they can make trouble for any dissident Republican, as we have seen over the last four years. So Trump effectively has still a very strong grip on his party, and it's for that reason that elected Republican senators, congressmen and women, have not called foul on this ludicrous uh, legal challenge that the president's been prosecuting to try to overturn the results of the election. Yeah, I totally agree. If you look at our polling, you see that 80 plus percent of Republicans say that uh, Donald Trump uh, had the election stolen from him. And we see that some of his biggest cheerleaders in, in the Senate right now, people like Lindsey Graham and Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio, were his former opponents who had very withering criticisms of him. Um, but they've changed their tune. And the Republican senators who did not, who defied the president, um, have largely been forced into early retirement. I think that that um, lock on party elites and on, on the base are mutually reinforcing. Uh, but it doesn't seem like even after an election loss that, uh, that it's attenuated at all. Do you think Trumpism will still exist within the Republican Party after Trump leaves office? Trump has cast such a, a pall over his party, is such a, a gigantic, maverick, thoroughly inconsistent figure, that Trumpism really is the leadership of Donald Trump, albeit that there are a few consistent strains to Trump's leadership, which I think would endure even if Trump was no longer the leader of the party. And I think they will endure. So I think that um, there will be no going back to sort of small government verities after Trump, whenever that post-Trump period might be. I think that the Republican Party is liable to remain populist, uh, sceptical of uh, free trade, uh, uh, highly um, sceptical of uh, foreign engagements, uh, multilateral organisations, in other words, that sort of populist, isolationist tendency that we've seen rise and fall in American politics over the decades is likely to endure uh, very strongly in the Republican Party, even after Trump goes. Those populist strains will certainly endure in the party. I think that it's hard to separate Trumpism from Trump himself. If you look at some Republican candidates who you might point to as having tried to emulate that playbook, it, it doesn't seem to materialize in, in the turnout that the president has been able to consistently um, engineer. And so if Trump recedes uh, from front view, I think that maybe there will be an opportunity for the Republican Party to change its tune. But if he persists, and I, I don't think there's any reason to doubt that he will relish his role as a kingmaker for the party in the coming years and perhaps try to take up the mantle of the presidency, um, the presidential campaign in 2024, that the, the grip that Trumpism has over the party will, will continue. Are we going to see more Donald Trump type characters in the Republican Party? There are already a profusion of minor cast characters. There's the president's own family, his son, Donald Trump Jr., uh, who very much has taken up the mantle of his father and who is purportedly looking into uh, running for some sort of higher office. You could see something within the Trump family itself. Um, and then there have been intermittent attempts at uh, replicating the populist Trumpy playbook within the Republican Party, uh, I think with varying degrees of success. But... Uh, you know, so far, it seems tough to do Trumpism without Trump himself. Yeah, I, I quite agree with that. Trump, you know, ludicrous uh, and a big loser, uh, as he may seem, is is a remarkable political force. And it's it's 
it's tough to to replicate his charisma, um, certainly as enjoyed by his devotees, and also his 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 extraordinary conviction, his extraordinary shamelessness in uh, prosecuting his case for himself. It, he's a one off, I think, but I think that uh, a populist leader who has taken note of the the temperature of his party and the issues that are popular within his base, uh, taking note from Trump's success, that leader is likely to be successful. Is the era of the Republican Party's alternative facts here to stay? The mouthpieces on the evening broadcasts of Fox News are sort of currently emblematic of an alternative fact universe. They have been cheerleaders for Trump and for his bending of of reality, his alternative realities throughout the past four years. However, we're at the point where we're contemplating an even more loyal Trumpist uh, right-wing media. Trump himself is quite disaffected, disenchanted with Fox News right now and is urging his followers to to watch some of these um, even more uh, unashamedly pro-Trump uh, networks. And they have no qualms at all. Newsmax, uh, One American uh, News Network. These these uh, uh, new, uh, even more ludicrously um, loyal Trump uh, uh, mouthpieces uh, are are the the definition of an alternative fact universe. So so in that sense, I think that we can see not not only the alternative fact industry still continuing to chug away, but it, you know even more ludicrous and monstrous alternative reality taking shape on the right. How will the Republican Party survive as the country becomes more diverse, less white, less religious and more progressive? I think that their results this time improving among African Americans and Hispanics suggested that they can make some progress uh, among minorities that um, as much as Democrats may want uh, the demographic changes happening in this country to be a, a destined permanent majority, that's not necessarily the case. Um, Hispanics and African Americans, to to take the two uh, demographic groups that we think the president improved upon, despite you know four years of what college educated liberals would look on as as racist uh, actions of family separation and and whatnot. Um, that despite that, that he made gains, I think suggests that um, you know it reflects the fact that among these groups, there's a high degree of religiosity. Um, certainly much higher than the white college-educated liberals who are increasingly the base of the Democratic Party. Um, and it's, it, it can't be taken for granted that, uh, that folks uh, of, of those races will, will permanently vote for, for the Democrats. We still don't know how much of that bumper support for Democrats in the white suburbs was an anti-Trump vote or was a sign of a new kind of um, left-leaning allegiance. I think it's perfectly possible to imagine that a good uh, portion of those suburbanites would be very happy to to drift back to a a culturally conservative Republican party that they have for the longest time identified with if it had a less offensive leader. Will Trump run again in 2024? And if so, who in the Republican Party might challenge him? I think that if he runs, as he reportedly is contemplating doing, uh, there will be very few folks in the Republican Party who would want to uh, challenge the president at this point. I mean, pity Mike Pence, who thought that it was his turn this time, uh, who will be entirely frozen out, I believe. Uh, you might see some opposition again from the folks who opposed him in 2016. Maybe Ted Cruz tries to challenge him again. He's clearly ambitious. He has a few more presidential cycles left uh, for him to run in. Um, the president probably only has 2024, given his age. Um, but, you know, I think if he tried to do it and if his health allowed him to, uh, he, at least at this point, seems like he'd have a a formidable chance of actually securing the nomination again. I think that things could look quite different in two years' time. And I think it's it's possible to imagine Trump with uh, rather less than, uh, uh, you know, half of the party um, uh, behind him, still raging, still tweeting, still uh, drawing thousands of people to his rallies, but just not the same force in the Republican Party that he is currently. It is possible to imagine him 
you know, uh, uh, hubristically walking into a, a, a Republican primary for 2024 and finding that he's just not the man that he was. I don't think that's beyond the realms of imagination. And in that case, I think you would get quite a broad spectrum of would-be successes standing against him. If Trump is strong, it almost goes without saying that that, that sort of establishment orthodox conservative figure will uh, get blown out of the water by Trump. And actually, I, I think even if Trump is, is weak, it's much uh, easier to imagine uh, a populist um, of some shade um, winning the party support. I, I think ironically, if Trump were to run in 2024, you know, it might dissuade the Trumpiest members of the party from running. You know, Mike Pence probably wouldn't be able to run. Uh, Christy Noem, the governor of, of South Dakota, who has um, raised her national profile by being very close to the president, um, probably in that case can't can't run. And in fact, it might just leave the um, folks who differ with the president as the only one standing, which which might be an interesting turn. But obviously, this is uh, four years is a very long time in American politics to predict ahead. Hi, I'm Idris Kaloon. I'm the U.S. policy correspondent for The Economist. Uh, you can read our latest coverage of the Republican Party by clicking the link here. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe.